lot of virtual Iraq and Afghanistan. And it's, like I said, it's a PTSD is an, a, a disorder of avoidance. And so sometimes even when people are going through exposure therapy, it's like they're giving you the after action report or the police report. They're, they can tell you what happened, but they're still cut off from their emotions. And I think it's harder to avoid in the VR. Hey everybody, Andy Stump here. Here is an exclusive clip from my new podcast, Change Agents, an ironclad original series. New episodes drop every week, so subscribe on YouTube at This Is Ironclad or wherever you get your podcasts, also available on audio-only platforms. So you guys are also playing around with virtual reality exposure, something I have never even heard of. Like I peripherally heard of MDMA and people's experience. This one is a completely new topic for me. So can you please unpack this? Absolutely. So we published, you're not going to believe how long ago, we published the very first study of anybody using virtual reality to treat a psychological or psychiatric disorder in 1995. That's how long I've been doing this. <laughs> I didn't even know that virtual reality was a thing in 95. I feel I like it was the worst visual experience ever for whoever participated in that. Well, it, it was way different <laughs> than it is now. The computers were, were so huge, it was in another room. You know, it wasn't just on a, a desktop. The, nope. head, the head mounted display um, was heavy and clunky and it cost $16,000. Yeah, so it was a different experience than it is now. But so it was, it was like a test balloon to see if we could. And so we did it for exposure therapy. We did it for the fear of heights. And the question was, could we get people scared in virtual reality? Because like I said, you need to get people engage, you need to activate the the emotions, and then could we get them better? And the answer is yes, um, that we, we were able to get people better. And seven out of 10 of the people who got the virtual reality exposure therapy put themselves in real life height situations at the end of the study without us even asking them to. So it translated to real life. So then we were doing more and more. The, the one I was begging the computer scientists to make was a virtual airplane. I live in Atlanta. You've probably flown through the Atlanta airport. The Many times, constantly, busiest, more than I would like to. Busiest airport <laughs> in the world. And it's a real pain if I have to treat someone with the fear of flying, if I have to actually go to the airport with them, you know, we've got traffic. If I have to fly with them, that's going to take all day. It's going to be expensive. Insurance isn't going to cover it. So I, I was really begging for the virtual airplane, and we've done a number of studies, even comparing it to using a real airplane, and it works. It works just as well as using a real airplane, but I can do everything I need to without leaving my office and in my hour therapy session. I can take off as many times as we need. If they're not ready for turbulence, I can guarantee there won't be turbulence. When they are ready for turbulence, I can guarantee there will be turbulence. So I love it. Um, the virtual airplane is actually my favorite just because it makes therapy so much easier. Um, but yes, we have, um, so the very first time anybody used VR for PTSD, we were doing it at the end of the 90s for Vietnam veterans. We created a virtual Vietnam. Wow. Um, figuring at that point, anybody still left in the system was probably treatment resistant. And we wanted to see if the, if the VR could add anything. Um, but it, we were worried, you know, because it's a very potent stimulus, um, but it it was useful. Um, and so now we've we've gone with that and we've got a virtual Iraq and Afghanistan that we've used in a couple of studies and that we've got available now at the Emory Healthcare Veterans Program. And it's, like I said, it's a PTSD is an, a, a disorder of avoidance. And so sometimes even when people are going through exposure therapy, it's like they're giving you the after action report or the police report. They're, they can tell you what happened, but they're still cut off from their emotions. And I think it's harder to avoid in the VR because they're saying it, they're in there in their memory, they're seeing it because the therapist is matching what the patient is describing. So for example, like I said earlier, driving back to base, Jones next to me, hidden ID, everything fills with smoke. We can recreate that. <laughs>